Hello, so this is a very quick uh, tutorial on how to first uh, open and explore some data in um, uh, Arc Catalog and Arc Map. So first of all, we can open uh, Arc Catalog whenever we have a folder with some GIS data. And we can go to this uh, um, little button here, is the second button on the left upper side. And this will open up a um, a connect to folder uh, window. So I prepared some uh, uh, data inside my documents folder. It's ArcGIS lecture, GIS data one. So once we have made the connection to this folder, it means that now we're able to explore it. Uh, here you see I have lots of uh, lots of different folders where I, I have all my data and I can look for this one here and inside here uh, there are uh, all the files that are included in this folder. So uh, this uh, is good for a first quick exploration of different data sets. For example, if I click in here, I have a shape for a shape file points uh, and I can go up here and see what are the contents of this, of this the preview of this uh, and uh, the description of, of this shapefile. So I can see, for example, the extent, the scale ranges, and uh, a description if that was provided by, uh, by whoever uh, did this, um, uh, this shapefile. So if I go back again here to preview, I can go down here and I can preview this data set in terms of geography or I can also preview the table. So I can, I can have a look at what I have into the, inside the table and uh, what are the different uh, fields inside of this database. The same thing, uh, now I'm going to go back to geography, the same thing I can do for other types of shapefiles. This is a, a shapefile of uh, uh, European countries, for example. Uh, this is another one uh, um, showing economic zones, ferries across Europe, et cetera, et cetera. But I can also preview um, raster files, just this one, which uh, represents uh, the geology of uh, um, a place in Germany. So um, what I can also do is uh, right click on one of the shape files and see its properties. So from its properties, I can actually see basically the general name and the aliases. Here I can give uh, a nicer name, for example, Oh no, this doesn't work here. So I cannot give it a name here, but I can set an alias um, when I edit this field. Um, I can see which coordinate system uh, this has. And again, a list here of the fields. Uh, if I have indexes in my table and the extent of my feature, if I need to know that. So this is pretty much how um, a folder looks like from Arc catalog. Now, uh, what I can do is to open ArcMap uh, and I can do exactly the same thing uh, by to, to add data. I can go to this uh, button here, uh, the yellow with the cross, add layers, add data. And you see that here I have uh, the folder I was looking at. If I don't have it here, again, I have to connect to it through this button. It, it will open again the same connect to folder uh, that uh, I showed you before. So I can go to GIS data one and select, for example, uh, the different countries of Europe. And I will have displayed all the different kinds of countries of, of Europe. If I select to add another, um, another file, I can add the European cities, for example. And even more, I can add, for example, the ferries. So let's, let's stick with these three three layers. So um, this is the table of content here on the table of contents here on the left. And one important thing to remember is that uh, um, the, the layers that are higher in the table of content are actually uh, visible above the others. So if I, for example, put countries, I can drag them up you will see that they go in front of the cities and ferries and I cannot see the cities anymore. So uh, I can actually bring it back so I can see everything. Um, one thing I can do uh, just to start displaying a little bit my map um, is uh, uh, changing uh, how these uh, are displayed, how these uh, different elements are displayed. 
Uh, down here, uh, there are zoom in, zoom out buttons and pan buttons or full extent buttons that allow us to, for example, zoom into one part of the data set. Let's go to, let's go to, I don't know, Italy, for example, Italy and France. Um, so basically, what I can do, first of all, is double click on the cities and you see that the layer property pop up uh, appears here. So let's have a look at, uh, this is common to any shapefile or any um, vector element that I load in ArcGIS. And let's see very quickly what uh, uh, what what is in the in here so uh first of all you have a general tab where you have the layer name and uh, if it's visible or not visible a description of it uh, european cities the cities of europe including national capitals etc etc um, and here uh, you have credits uh, if you create a shape file it's always good to to put a credit here so if and everybody anybody uses that uh, they will be able to reference back to you here you have the source table again the extent the maximum extent of your uh, of your data and here you have the geographic coordinate system in which uh, the data is um, is represented one very important thing to remember is that uh, um, if you load two vector files that are supposed to overlap but do not overlap um, usually uh, the problem resides in the coordinate system. So you should go here in both um, in both files and check that the geographic coordinate system is the same. Otherwise, you would have to reproject one of those to the same coordinate system as the other. Here is a, just some general um, uh, choice for how to uh, display, uh, what to display when selected. Uh, here is... Uh, again uh, um, a, a, a tab to basically show you uh, how to display uh, how to display the the field then you have uh, the symbology tab we're going to get back to this but this basically styles uh, how you can see your point fields again it shows you all the fields that are inside the table uh, definition query basically you can decide if you want to show um, some uh, only some uh, parts of this record by defining a query. You can go into Query Builder, select a field, and maybe, for example, you can um, you can, for example, level, get unique values one, oh sorry, equals to one, and only the cities with level one will be uh, will be displayed, whatever level one means. I didn't dig into this data set, but this is just to um, define uh, or to filter out uh, data from your uh, from your shape. Then we have the labels. It takes a bit to load, probably. Yes, uh, we have the labels, uh, basically asking you if you want to put a label, uh, put a label to to this layer. I'm going to show you uh, in a second um, what to do. And these are the three tables that are related basically uh, to how uh, this table is joined to others. This is pretty advanced. Uh, again, another advanced field. If you have uh, uh, time functions on this layer, you can enable them so you will be able to uh, show display time uh, changes or filter by time changes. Um, and this one is again, uh, if you want to, this is uh, if you want to show, uh, for example, uh, um, uh, some some sort of pop up uh, when you click on on one of these points. So let's go back to stay on the very basic basics. I want to go back to the symbology fields. Uh, for a point, for example, we can click on the single symbol and we can decide that we want the cities represented as, for example, a nice yellow, uh, a nice yellow dot with five. So you see that now I changed, uh, maybe yellow is not a great, great one. Let me make it a black five or even 10. Okay. Okay, so you see that whenever I apply in the background, the map is changing. So you can see the cities uh, dots, um, uh, the city's dots um, appear and change their, their appearance. 
The other one uh, that we can do, the other thing that we can do is to label the feature in this layer. Let me show you how to do this. So you click on label features in this layer. And in this case, we want to label the features all in the same way. Uh, then uh, the interface will ask you uh, if you want which table uh, you want to, from, from which field in the table you want to, um, uh, to, to label. Uh, to label your uh, your uh, data set. And uh, in this case, uh, we can choose the name of the city. Now this with lots of labels might take some time. So let's see how it works. Okay, this one works fairly, worked fairly fast. And now you see that I have a bunch of cities with, uh, um, uh, with my, um, with the names of, of these cities displayed here. Okay. Another thing I can do, if I go, for example, on the ferries, let's just change uh, a little bit the, um, uh, the layer. I don't want to label this layer, but for example, actually what I can do is uh, um, try to color the different, uh, um, uh, the different routes of the ferries by, um, by, the, by their length, for example. So I can choose a nice blue to red scale. So I'm telling RGIS to color them by length, which is a value contained in the table. Um, I choose a color ramp from blue to red. And then I go down here and I make add all values. So you'll see that here, <clears throat> sorry. You see that here I have uh, basically labeled everything by, by length. So. Let me choose again. The, okay. Let me choose a, again the red to blue. Okay. Blue means that it's very short. Red means that it's very long. Yellow is something in between. So this is it. And you'll see that now if I press OK, maybe I zoom out a little bit. And you see that I have, for example, let me close down the cities, for example. But you see that, for example, the routes that are across the, the English Channel are very short and other routes which go basically, uh, for example, from uh, across the Mediterranean are uh, longer, so they are in, in um, uh, reddish colors. So this is, uh, um, this is how we can style the layers. Uh, and all these styling actually happens uh, because uh, we have a data table associated to each uh, drawing, to each vector. So if I go here, I right click on one of these layers, I can open the attribute table and you actually see that I have a table pretty much like a, an Excel table or a spreadsheet that basically gives you uh, different uh, um, uh, different uh, uh, different values. If I want to know which line corresponds to which value, let me keep the table here in a in a corner. What I do here is I select features. I select one of those, and you'll see that it is selected here but it also is highlighted. This is, for example, the Dublin to Cherborough um, ferry, and it's 700, uh, 800 kilometers, more or less, long. So uh, this is basically how we uh, open up a shapefile, how we look at its properties, and how we generally, how we generally um, work with it. Uh, another, maybe one other thing, uh, let me, for example, uh, look at uh, the country. Now, uh, what I did before was dividing uh, the ferries into a categorical value with unique values. But what I can also do, for example, and this, is, uh, this works very well with the countries, is to divide them by quantity. So for example, um, I can, <clears throat> I can look uh, at uh, the extent, the area of the country. And if I select quantiles and graduated colors, I can actually divide the countries according to a, um, 
according to different classes. Uh, maybe I can make four classes and apply them. So what I what I did now, I just divided the countries the countries based on their extent. So you will see that, for example, uh, smaller countries like uh, Portugal, for example, or Ireland are colored in red. Uh, then uh, slightly bigger ones like Italy and Germany are colored in uh, yellow. And uh, for example, uh, as bigger ones like uh, Spain and France are colored in, uh, uh, in blue. And of course, the biggest, the biggest ones are colored in, in uh, darker, darker blue. So this is a quick way on uh, to basically that, that we can basically use to style layers. Uh, I showed you how to put the labels in your layers. Uh, again, just be very cautious with the with the labels because if you have lots of um, uh, lots of uh, uh, values, it might take a lot a bit of time to uh, for for the labels to show. Uh, but this is basically uh, a very quick introduction on how to display shapefiles in ArcGIS.